We want them in the biffy. So instead of putting a load of boilies out, I'm going to be doing a bombardment of hand grenades of ground bait and sweet corn. And you can see it's all I've made out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about a dozen or 15 balls of ground bait. I'm going to fire it pretty well out where that, uh, that coot is and then just fish a single bag over the top of it with just a single boilie and half a dozen freebies. And the moment I'm getting little beeps from leaves in the line, which is going to be annoying, especially if it gets up during the night. So let's get these out there. I like to wet that pouch like that, just so that uh, the ground boat pools don't stick in there. I'm using that tree, the dead tree there, as a bit of a guide. And I'm going to be fishing two rods out there. Hopefully, the fish will move in and I might pick one or two up. And the amount the seagulls eat is pretty sort of negligible. I don't mind spraying them around because this is about the size that you put in a PVA bag. A little clump like that, so it's quite a sort of handy size. I'm lucky these haven't broken up yet. So you just put the pouch in there. If you don't use a rigid ground bait pouch, it will crush it and it will explode generally up in the air. I don't mind if they're scattered around a bit. So it's carpal. Move around finding it. Job done. Seagulls get minimal. I have seen boilies go out one after the other, they just eat them, and I'm not prepared to sacrifice a lot of expensive boilies for seagulls to eat. That is so black. I'm gonna to have to get all my gear inside pretty sharpish. So I'm set up in here. Having a go for the carp, it's just a regular fishing session. That's all it is, late autumn, early winter. The leaves are turning, but they haven't gone off the trees yet. The downside is the wind, a little bit of colour, we've had a lot of rain. There's colour in the water, whether they will feed or not, I don't know. It could be, could be a blank. It's always nice to get that first fish, you know, where you go beep, 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 beep. Not just a single beeps, because that's generally a leaf on the line in the wind. But there we go, sweet corn, ground bait and a couple of bags out there. I've got one I'm going to put under the tree here. I've actually got a line out there for Xander underneath. And as soon as it gets dark after I finish what I call the Xander period, which will be dusk, dusk into dark for about maybe an hour, out goes a bag and it will be a boilie out, out there and a couple straight out here. But that tree up there has got the cormorant up on the top, the enemy, just sitting up there. That's a good marker just to just to throw out. I don't want to go near the end of the island. Low skies just go right tight to the end of the island. I don't want to do that and risk. I've got all the hassle of clipping up to get the right distance. Plus, of course, I could go in the bushes. I could overcast. This way, I'm just a straight low out there and I'm sure sooner or later there's going to be at least one carp that stumbles across it. I just hope this rain doesn't come. It might blow through. It won't be pleasant. It won't be a pretty sight if it comes in here.
I enjoyed that spag bowl. Listen, thanks for coming back to join me. See well, how I'm going to get on. What am I going to do in the second half? I've had a brilliant time on those sander. It's dark now. Happens every night, I've noticed that. However, I told you I threw some bread in, so I think I'm going to go for the carp now. It's still really, really slicked off, stilled off. I have heard some little little noises like that. I don't know if they're carp or not, but I've got the same problem I had before, the moon's coming up. This time it's in my favour because it's behind the trees and I'm looking down light as it were. I've thrown some more bread in. I'm going to bring the last of the sand rods in here. I'm going to put a single hook on the other one in case something comes in with crust. I'm going to put my um, carp baits straight out where I pounded all that ground bait. Good session so far. Don't go away because I haven't got any idea what I'm going to catch next. Okay, I just told you I've got a fish on top, <laughs> even in this cold autumn weather. Hooked it up, hook pinged out. I don't think I'm going to get a second chance at it, but I am going to keep that rod spare in case I hear a fish take it. One's already out there. The other one I've got inline lead, a boilie here, and I'm just going to send out, if I can find it, a little mesh stocking of goodies. I could have done with a bigger hook. It seems quite a small hook on this rig they give me here. I don't like going through the knot. I feel it goes a bit gobby on the hook, you know. So I'm going to put them out in the same swim, right? Then I'll put those sprats. Because there's ground bait around those sprats. And if there's small fish around there, maybe the big fish will come as well. I've heard two really big splashes out there because there's a horrendous sized pike in it. They reckon it's 40 pounds. I've seen a picture of it, it's 36, 8 or something like that. Well, I've seen the photograph of it. Nobody's caught it yet. It's a big one though. But it's a big water though. Let's get this one out there and then I'm going to start putting some more bread out. See if I can pick one off the top. One carp is all I'm looking for to get me through the night. My downside is there's a little bit of wind coming now. Although it's flat in front of me, it's drifting the bread in, that's no good. I need it to sort of go out away and get the fish feeding towards me. So maybe that one that I lost was my only chance. Listen, if I go through the night and I don't get a carp, I'm going to go for Xander in the morning at dawn. That's what the uh, tackle shop guy said. Low light again, see what I can, see what I can do at dawn. Maybe just try the sprats. It'd be nice to get one carp anyway. If not, I've had some fantastic sand fishing, which you saw that in the last film. Come on, come up on the top. Guys, I'm on. Bring this camera down. I don't know if we're going to get anything here. I can only get what I've got. I haven't got the head cam. Listen, it's a fish. Probably not a big one, I don't know. Do you know what, that was thrown out, absolutely just lobbed out where I lost the other one on the floating crust. There is no bait out there, just what's in my little bag of goodies, my goodie bag. Don't think it's a big fish. Listen, take anything. After that sander session, a carp would be nice. Digging now, it's probably eight pounds, nine pounds. Oh, losing line. Hang on a minute. You never know with fish, do you? They're funny old creatures. This is a soft rod. Tell you what, for an eight pounder he's going well. He suddenly got really heavy. Now I've got to watch these bushes on the right because 
The guy in the tackle shop said they will kite to the right. This one is loading up. I mean, big time. He's really got a bend in the rod now. I haven't seen him yet. What is this fish? Turn this thing off, I've got enough clicks on it. This is the best eight pound carp you've ever seen. Oh my god. Oh, 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 oh. oh my goodness me. Oh my word. Oh goodness me. Graham's really grossly underestimated here. Big time. Absolutely big time. Hooks tangled up, hooks out. There's the boilie, still there. Whack it, dude. I'm going to get the scales for this one, people. What a beauty! Oh my god. Here we go, scale time. Eighteen four. Oh. I'm only ten pounds out. Eighteen four. Oh my god! And he's even put his fin up for us. Eighteen four there. Old Berry Hill carp. Main Lake. What a beauty! Major result, and that's on top of what? It's about six or seven sander. Let's get him back. Look at this one. Something else, is it not, people? 18.4 common car. There he goes. What a beauty. Oh, oh, oh my goodness me. The night is young. Oh, straight over the feet, straight over the feet. Well, nothing yet, people. 20 past nine odd. It's annoying with the floating crust because the wind can, it just comes up and then it goes down. But what's happening is it comes up and then it just drifts the crust away and that takes the fish with it. You know, you tend to think when the wind drops again, I'll throw some more bread out there, throw some more crust, more floaters, whatever you're using. And you think the fish is still there. No, no, the fish have gone where the food's gone. So they've disappeared off down there, unless you're in an area, let's say, the edge of a wee bed. One single beep. Unless you're near the edge of a feature, a wee bed, a drop off a shelf, gravel bar, something which you know the fish are going to come back to. But generally, when they drift away, especially floating crust, or any form of floater, they're going to go with them, feeding with them. It's illogical to think the food's going all the way over here, well, I like being over this piece of uh, mud or gravel or whatever, but the food's all just gone past my face and all these other carp are taking it down there. So they're still competitive because they can be individual, but they can also be a shoalfish. So what I've done is I've, I've, I've got nothing off that way. This is the first beep actually I've had here on the two that are straight out over the ground weight balls I put out there. And I was going to go under that, under that bush around the side and I thought, you know, if I do get a big fish, it might go in there and out the other side and I don't see it again. So I've come out to where I was seeing most of the fish move, the little, tiny little dimples with the floating crust. And I've dumped a load of bait in the bag. I've got, uh, well, what have I got? Some regular pellets here. Got some regular pellets. I've got the wrong size mesh bag. I've got some of the old peaches and cream. I'm not putting them on the hook, I'm putting them in as loose because they're a small one. I feel if I put a real small one on there, I'll tell you what size it is. I'm going to get bream, and they are, I don't know what they might... Oh, that 
was a pick up, that was a pick up. We went on in the it Feels awfully breamy. Feels awfully breamy. This is a small fish, I don't know what it is. I'll let you know in a second. I released him in the side, guys, as a bream. <laughs> bream on one of these super hard big boilies that bream I was supposed to take. Well, that was the camera as well, but you didn't see it. But it was a bream about, I don't know, two and a half, three pounds. Trouble is, I haven't got much, many of those uh, mesh, mesh bag things left. A couple more mixes. But nice to see the bream in there. See, that's a bream, and that was where I was cast a bit of carp. So I'm going to dump this straight back out there. And you know what? We might just get lucky. Wow, there is a lot of owl activity tonight. It's at least three. At least three that I know of, probably more than that. I've noticed they don't make a lot of uh, noise when it's windy. It seems to be when it's calming down a bit. A good pointer if the owls come out that I might, I might need to go float a fish and it goes flat calm again. That one's really close. getting cold because I can see my breath now. <sighs> Didn't even look to see what time it is people. I was in Z land, not from Z to Xander, but Z to sleep. I'm on again. And this one is indeed kiting to the right. I've got the winter headgear on. <laughs> if you wonder why I'm looking over here, I'm talking to the monitor, which is the fact that the lens is there. Sorry about that. You see a lot of YouTubers talking over here because that's where the monitor is. Especially at night. This one is indeed a smaller one. A nice common man. Well, I'm going to have to switch cameras, people, because this one, the big camera's just uh, come up memory car full, so I don't know what you're going to get here. Let's see how much he weighs. I'd say it's a good sized double figure fish. Hopefully, you see some of them there, boys. There he goes, I'm, I've got memory cards of batteries full everywhere. Well, I don't actually know what you got on that last one because the memory card is full on the big camera. And this little small camera here has given me a lot of trouble I'm playing up. I'm now on my third battery. Don't buy cheap Chinese batteries. They go down at the last minute. The time is something obscure. It's quarter to two in the morning. I was pretty much in the land of... Uh, Land of Zed's then. Two really good fish, a 17 plus and an 18 plus. Good scrappers. I thought it was a small fish again, but whatever's happening to me, I'm just misjudging everything tonight. Gratefully accepted though. It's pitch black out there. The moon is gone, thank goodness. You probably won't see much with this camera. Just so I hit, the, hit it up like that, but I'm gonna get sorted out now. Nothing on that one. Uh, again yet at the moment it's nice and black tempted to chuck some bread out there I've got to get my batteries and camera sorted out first so I suppose really I ought to get the baits in the water okay guys I'll catch up with you later
getting tired now. Oh, I've got a pretty good bream here, people. This is now my fourth bream. I can get him up. Come on, come in. You're probably ping off. Ah, he's come off. But it was a bream, that's the fourth bream I've had now. Well boys, it is... 10 to 7. Don't need an early morning alarm clock here, you just wait for the Gatwick flight path to come across you. And the ducks and the geese. No more fish, but really pleased with that. 17 plus and 18 plus. Missed another one as well during the night. But I'm trying to get one last banker out of it. I'm not going to go home yet. Obviously it's low light, so I switched back the other two rods here. I switched those back to a legend with a link legend, uh, one last roach I've got, and a free lined but it's got a SSG shot on it, Sprat on the left hand one. So I've thrown those where I had my two carp rods out. I've got the last of my ground bait, and I've thrown six balls of ground bait out there, about 40 feet, 50 feet, something like that. And I'm just about to send out this little bag of goodies with one single hard boilie there. Gonna send that out and just leave one out for carp and try if I can pick up another fish. I had four bream during the night. One was quite a nice bream, about three, three plus, four, three pounds, something. So I'm just gonna try and pick off maybe, maybe in the low light level, another sander, and then I think I might have, if it's 11 o'clock in the morning before I pack up for an hour, I might put a couple of swim feeders on to see if I can pick a bream up. So good session, really good session. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it, but um, didn't get as cold as I thought I'd get considering this time of year. And of course it's, uh, it's dawn now, everything's waking up, but the wind hasn't come up yet. A lot of high cloud, I don't know whether that's high pressure that's in between two lows, but it's certainly a nice idyllic setting apart from the jets, which I can see up there, they are absolutely one, two, they're stacking them all around me. So let's get this posted out there and I'll see if I can grab another hour on this lovely soft thing here. Occasionally get a question, why do you put your trousers inside your socks? I suppose it does look a bit strange in the morning when you're walking around and you're going through the supermarket. I do that to stop insects crawling up inside my legs and biting me. Now I'd less likely to get mosquitoes in this sort of weather, but you never know what nasties are out there crawling around. So that's why I tuck my socks into my trousers or my trousers into my socks. Been a long night. The morning shift is starting over there. Another enthusiastic supporter of the fishing sport. Just going along the bank looking for swimming. I think there's somebody over there. Yes, yeah, somebody over there. So here at Berry Hill, they're keen, they do start early. Or like me, you just stay up all night. I think that thing's calling for about uh, another hour. All right, boys, I've just got a fish hooked up on that uh, bag I threw out there, but it will be a bream. Definitely not a carp. Yeah, it's a bream, I'll show you this one anyway. If I can get him in the net. Nice bream there. I know it's on a carp bait, but at the end of the day, it's my fifth bream. Still going strong, and I still can't get to sleep. And I've still got to dry my hands, get all this gunk off. Yucky.
Well guys, it's Tackle Shack time. We do have, in fact, our first guest arriving here. Now, just have a look. He's not in there yet. He hasn't seen this. Here he comes. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be a surprise? Our first guest is... Mike <laughs> from TA Outdoors. How you doing, guys? You right? He happens to be my son, but there you go. <laughs> it's the only Special guest best. I can afford. <laughs> Mike's got, what you got with you, Mike? Uh, I brought my drop shot gear with me. Yeah. I haven't really uh, had a look at it for quite a while, so yeah. I figured we'd... Run through uh, some lures for yeah, the guys. Now, Mike, this was his surf, surf shack. I think I told you when we did the first one there. He hasn't seen it for years. <laughs> yeah. Right, so I can even... I can so. tell you that the outside, as you can see, has all been stained up. All yeah. these guys watching it have seen this. The windows have been putty and repaired I'm going inside and I want to capture Mike's face when he sees it oh wow what that's ridiculously cool that is real I'm impressed built that this built this the table as well out of pallet really wood in the desk that is really really neat that's why is that wallpaper no bricks don't tell him, just don't tell That's him. That's so realistic, isn't it? That is really, really good. It was done by the YouTube guys and me. You lot helped me build it. Smith was nowhere that to be seen. Really... Oh, you've got a G stove in here as well. Absolutely. Woof, look at that. Big one, the XL yeah. one. I got, I got the great. oven. Is that about the right height for the oven? Yeah, you well, should it go down? Because it's going to get hotter. So if you want to cook for, uh, faster, yeah. have it here. If you want to slow cook something, you'd put it on the next Oh, one. really? That yeah. far up? Yeah. So you just move it up to the next bar. So when you come up again, we're going to cut a hole in here. Yeah, yeah. And run the run, you know, run the pipe yeah. out there. Put the Sparker restaurant on, right? And saying yeah, this. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Smith is in here. Sorry, R.I.P. <laughs> headphone users there. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that is a Sparker restaurant. Yeah, that goes on the outside. Yeah, that's good. You got all the, yeah. Yeah. So it's all there. It's all going to be fitted up. I'm not sure what that small one is there. That's a top hat cap. Like you can use Sparker Rest to roll this. It just doesn't oh, either really way. Matter. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. That's just a bit better against the rain. Yeah. But, you know, that's going to get more rain, I guess, going at this bit. It doesn't really matter, to be honest. I've though. cut out uh, a load of overhanging branches as well. Yeah. This is yeah, really neat. It's pretty cool, isn't it? That and that's the guest really chair. Neat. See if it fits. He's the first one in it, people. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Like Interviewing. That. that is really neat. It's like a film set. It is. I've, 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 I've been doing a bit of filming in here. And uh, well pleased with it. Took me a long time to do all those cutaways up there, insets of the wallpaper. Yeah. Yeah, the mother came up with the idea of making it all like beamy, yeah, with stain, like and even did the windows. And you varnished this floor. I sanded it all down. Yeah. So had a bit of varnish on it as well. This so it's going to be a great place. I've got more stuff to go in here. Yeah. I'm going to go through all the bits and pieces later. And I'm thinking what I can put up here, whether it needs a big central shaft jaw. It does need jaw. something there, doesn't it? I don't know what it needs up there. I don't want to put my best fish in here because it might get damp. Well, they're going to get damp, so you've got to be careful. That's the thing, yeah, yeah. So it came up pretty well. We were going to do wood. That is really impressive. We were going to do wood, but we decided in the end, you know what? You never know. We we'll stick with the imitation brick. You'd never know, that's really good, that. I'm and your mother came up with another idea. I don't know how she does this. Every time she has an idea, she has to go and have a lay down for two <laughs> days. For two days at least. She said, why not continue it at the bottom, yeah. all the way round, yeah. so it looks like the bottom half, you know? Yeah. And put some wood beading over the top. Yeah, so it's really come up neat. pretty cool, yeah. That's for the uh, trolling, isn't it? Yeah, that's a spreader yeah. bar for a big tuna. Yeah, they've got the arcane rod. Yeah, I've, I've varnished them all, yeah. cleaned them up. It's an old beach casting one, believe it or not, that one. That is, I'm really impressed at. That is really, really Yeah, I've got neat. more stuff to go up here. Yeah, that is really neat. Got an old uh, split cane uh, fly rod here, trout fly rod. Usual jaws, boaty stuff, because obviously I like boaty. The occasional small lure, <laughs> not. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. that. As a kid, I used to like literally pulling that out the drawer that one yeah that, that mesmerized me when i was younger i always used this probably my favorite lure just to like look at and you can bend the fins out you know as well because really? they're on bend, bendable yeah. bits you can bend them out yeah if you wanted to create flying more fish, action yeah. flying fish yeah yeah a nice view of the sun going good old marlin lures and of course yeah, yeah look at that. that's what you call an office that is and that's my view because i always wanted a house facing west and i've got one sort of southwest yeah. So the wind comes straight in. That's a great view. All white, we stained all these down. Yeah. So, I mean, this has got to be this is really the place good. to do a few interviews, isn't it? This is really good. Yeah, I like this. Right, I think these guys are waiting to get, see the contents of your tackle bag. Right, okay. So here we are, the first interview in the tackle shop. No, here we are, the first interview in 
the Tackle Shack. That's got to be the official name because all you guys were pounding me with comments on the last few builds here. So it's got to be the Tackle Shack. Welcome to it, guys, and welcome to Mike. Unfortunately, the beers are in the house. <laughs> so Mike's going to run through a few of his favourite lures because he's uh, got quite a few bits and pieces of lures. Any beginners out there that want to go drop shotting or just regular shad fishing, Mike's going to get, get a little bit of a run through for you and see what he's up to. So I've got a mixture of lures here. This is the kind of staple lure boxes that I'll take with me on a mostly a drop shotting trip. But actually, I, I keep the same lures for sea fishing, for the LRF stuff, the light rock fishing. That's true, yeah. So, yeah. so it's the same box that I take sea fishing and course fishing, these three boxes. So I've got a mixture of what I would call creature baits, which are essentially creatures. So you've got, for example, here, that looks like a kind of squid. I don't know what that looks like. Yeah. Well, it's actually called the Kraken. But it's a it's a it's a kind of mini kraken lure. So oh, they like, make a giant one of these. They make a they? giant one. Yeah, I've seen this a huge one. Really yeah, huge. One. It's a it's an imitation of the the kraken, which is a big. Yeah. Everyone knows it's a mythical monster, but <clears throat> for here it's a lure. Then we've got some kind of grub. Now that's crayfish. Thing. Crayfish there, sorry. Now that should work because obviously a lot of the UK is swarming, especially in the south with crayfish. Yeah, you can see it's got two little claws there at the front. Yeah. So that's crayfish lure. They're really good for perch. Hopping them on the bottom. Really, really. So good. that wouldn't be drop. I wouldn't drop shot. No, that's not no, drop shot. They're a bottom either. fish. They're a bo uh, shellfish yeah. thing. They're a bottom uh, feeder. So I would keep that on the bottom, just hopping it really slowly. Um, and then this is a kind of creature bait mixture. It's a it's a bug really. You can see it's a bit more of a bug, but it's still got a swimming tail. So that's oh, a, a paddle tail. A paddle yeah, tail. that's a bit more of a swimming swimming one. That one. So creature bait. So creature you know, bait. It sort of applies to anything that doesn't look like anything specific. It's, that's how I've got it. Yeah, it's a, it's. I think bugs and creatures. That's yes. what creature bait. In my eyes, that's what creature baits are. I generally use them for perch. I wouldn't really use many creature baits sea fishing. I don't tend to do as well of them on them on sea fishing. They're mostly for perch. You think that, that a sea fish like something fast, but like so a shad, yeah, just something that's got fast. more of a, of a swim to it. Um, I have caught on creature baits, definitely. Rass like them. Yeah, Rass tend yeah. to like a creature bait, but not so much um, pollock and things like that. I've not done too well. I've done better with pollock on shad. So that's my kind of creature bait one. It's all a bit of a mixture as well. This one is more shad style fishing. You notice they're all a maximum of probably three inches. Three inch, I would say. I yeah. wouldn't go more. I wouldn't go more than four inches, really. Yeah. Um, unless, because then I'm going to attract pike. Yes. If I'm perch yes, fishing, I'm going to start to attract pike. Because you'd be fishing uh, for perch with what, like a trace or not a wire trace? No, not with a drop shot. People do. They still do, but I personally don't. I just use fluorocarbon. I have had pike take the lure, but with drop shot, I've always, whenever I've caught pike. Because of the way that the hook is and the line when they bite it, it's, yeah. it just hooks them on the edge of the jaw. So you haven't got it so inside it, the teeth? No, it doesn't go, they yeah. don't throat it, it just slides the way the line does. Oh, it good, just goes. Yeah. So I've always, personally, when I've caught pike, I've caught a number of pike on drop shot, they've always been lip hooked right on the edge of the jaw. And to tell the beginners, take it easy, would you say? Oh, with a pike, you let know, them have drag, let yeah, them take line. Exactly, don't yeah. try and horse them, otherwise you're going to bust the rod because they're quite light, those drop they, shot They bites. are light, yeah. Um, so these are my so kind of shad, soft plastic swimming bait, swim bait sort of thing. Uh, different colours, usually I do really well on white in uh, murky conditions, I like white, so perch wise would be white, but at the same time you've got your bright orange as well. You had one that's really like good. I have, I'm, I'm coming to that in a minute. I can't think I'm of what it was to, called. Yeah. Another shad there, again look, different colours, pink, yellow, look, they, like you say, lures catch fishermen more than they do fish, it's just, it's a personal preference. I'm, I go by the sort of law that I think fish just go for the movement. Yeah. They, they, there is a time, there's murky condition lures and there's clear condition lures, but I think the in-between colours don't matter too much. You either go for a dark lure or a light lure. Exactly, lure. change over. Yeah. You don't I get... don't think you need to worry too much about it's got to be green and red and black and yellow. Yeah. I think it's more certainly the movement is the main thing. Yeah. And to be honest, the fish, are, when they're bite, when they're feeding, they're going to take it. That's yeah. when they, that's when you're going to catch them when they're hungry. Now, I personally, I've got to tell you guys, I've done drop shotting with Mike. I have a lot of trouble getting on with it. And actually doing it is that patience. You know? yeah, yeah, it's a mental patience thing. I am terrible. I get bored so quickly. I think I keep moving. I yeah. like fishing. What are they shads? You shads. Say? You're, you're a shad fisherman. Yeah, you're definitely move. Like yeah, move. Like with move. drop shotting, it's you're one casting. Spot. You're moving, but yeah. you actually need to tweak it very slowly. I can't uh, do the slow. In one spot, it, it, ideally in one spot in an eddy. Use yes. eddy, overhanging trees and eddies, slack water, 
just on the edge, that's where I would personally chop so shot. Would you say you're almost for beginners, you're almost targeting a feature? Yeah, first. feature, 100%. You're in a feature of you some look, sort look of wee bed. Look for the fish holding area first, yeah. where the fish would be. Inevitably, perch shoals are going to be in slack water. They're not going to be swimming like a salmon in fast water. Yeah, yeah. They'll be in the, the slack water. Obviously, it does mean the pike will be there as well, because that's where they're going to feed on the small perch and roach and things like that. But I would look for this, the features first. Then you've got little ones that are kind of ribbed as well, which send off vibration. Again, I'm not too convinced by it. I do think it's a... Movement it's thing. A, it's a movement thing. The ribbed ones do give off more bubbles and things under the water, so they might give off a bit more attraction in that sense. But really, it's just it's the way you retrieve it. And then you've got ones which have no tail to them, like a split tail, and yeah. that's more of a drop shot. So it's just... Wiggly. When I'm drop shotting, I like a lure that's got really supple back section to it. That's where I'm coming to, and you can tell it's my best lure because there's only one left. <laughs> oh, great. And You're not going to give me that one, is it? That is this, which is the fish action. That's the one. I'll the Attractor Shad DS. Not sponsored by them. I've not been paid to it's say been, this. It's been, it's this been is a good my lure. last lure left of that type. It's like bluey, silvery colour. That's this all I can remember. Yeah, blue, it's a that. bluey colour with a sort of dark blue flecks in it. But look how I can hold it up and the tail just drops it's it. It's collapsed, so I can see that. So when you're jiggling that, look how much movement yeah. that has. If you've got a piece of bacon in front of Jack's yeah. and, and used bacon fat and started doing that, he's going to go crazy. <laughs> he's going to be there. If you had a biscuit there, he's probably still going to go crazy, but he'd go more whoa like that and yeah. be attracted to that because there's so much movement. And you look so at the back, the back half of that compared with the back half of this one. Yeah. See, look how it's collapsed. The if blue hold one, up, you hold the two together, you can see that fish action. The, the blue top, one. The top one has way, it's bent over way more than the, the red one there. That's my opinion for drop shotting. I like having something that has movement. Yeah. For perch, that is. That's, That's just my experience. Obviously, people go for much stiffer lures that barely move and just jiggle them on the spot. Yeah. Like a yeah, minnow yeah, wouldn't yeah. Go start flapping around. Minnows don't do that. You know, an actual That's minnow, true, yeah, yeah. he's not doing that. He's sitting there like this and probably quivering a little bit. But I've got to, when they're not feeding, you need to get them biting. Well, you've got to get that attraction in their yeah. face. Like pike with a twitch sprat. It's not going to just... It's going to go for the dead bait eventually, but you're going to catch more when it's going right across its nose. Yeah, you're attracting them. And then you're getting that predatory instinct of, well, I'm not going to refuse a burger if it's going past. Exactly. You yeah. know, it's, you're going to take... Or a meat pie. Meat pie, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so th that's that. And that then, is a saying of rub up in uh, Rutland. Yeah. Trout fishing. You're not going to have a mistake of meat pie, are you? Yeah. Whoosh. <laughs> you're not going to that was the same. I've always remembered it. Yeah. What are these things in there? These are... I don't do too well on these. These are tiny mini, oh no, I mean they're just well, a they tangled mini. mess. Mini, mini trebles, which again is really fun to try and unhook miniature treble hooks. I can imagine those in the landing net. Yeah. What, what fun. They're just little um, hard baits, these ones. Little crank, mini crank baits. Um, to be honest, they're so small that they're a nightmare to cast. You can't get oh, them out too light. far. Yeah. They're just a bit yeah. too light. So you end up not covering much water. Yeah. So you end up catching less fish, in my opinion. But they can be really good for chub. In the yes, spring and yes. summer, they can be good for chub, just bobbled on the surface. They're definitely bite surface. size, aren't they? Yeah, they're chub. I would say you do better with chub on those. They do have a rattle in them as well. Um, the other thing, <clears throat> sea fishing wise, is I've got like a, 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 a jig. So this is my killer mackerel jig. Yeah, you did really well. It was uh, this. It was down the West Country once with you. Yeah, I mean, got Cornwall. a film up on it down Cornwall, and I was quite jealous. He phoned me up and he absolutely slayed. I got a red letter. Pollock and. Yeah. Did you have garfish on lures? I had garfish, I had pollock, and I had mackerel non-stop, every cast. And that's what I call it on. Seven grams, I, I always remember it's seven grams. Just bear in mind, this is, what, four years ago, five years ago? Single hook. Sure jig, single hook, um, silver little jig there, and it's just seven grams, little bit of feather material at the end of it. Dead simple, really reflective. Low rod tip and just wind, pump, wind, wind, pump, wind, wind. So it's doing that. It's jerking. Jerking, it's jerking water. Movement, yes. And weird. the mackerel just go absolutely bonkers. It, it must be absolutely the bite size of, say, yeah. small white bait. When you small think about the white bait we caught off Chetland yeah. Beach, it's, that it's about that size. It's yeah. almost that size. And it's got that little feather and tassel at the back, give it a little bit of movement. Yeah. And it's got a sort of prism effect to it as well, flash the prism it does, effect. yeah. So that's that's pretty much my, that's, I don't overcomplicate it, I don't have huge lure boxes with tons of lures. Well it's loads to choose from there if anybody wants to go. Yeah. And not too expensive to set up for beginners I would imagine. No, not at all really, no. You, the, the expensive part really is the the, the, the the lures, the reels, yeah the reels, this is a baby reel. This is a, I don't know, two 2,000 size reel I want to say. One or is that the smaller they go? One and a half thousand I think, yeah, yeah maybe it is. It's a real, real small one. 
I've got, this is my LRF reel, so sea fishing reel. I've got ultralight, like six pound braid, four pound yeah, fluorocarbon. Sure. I would go heavier than that now. I, I know the LRF laws and rules state you should go <laughs> lower, but yeah, I'm not right. about that. If I just yeah, like, do those rules. Just like tackle fishing, I would still, for sea fishing, go with minimum 10 pound yeah, braid. Yeah. Because yeah. if you get a decent sized bass or something taken, well, that's the you're going to want to land it. So I go 10 pound braid, maybe eight pound fluorocarbon. The other thing we talked about, and this was when we were down, I think, on Chesil Beach uh, this year filming. Were you on braid then, I think? And what we mm. noticed was, in a windy day, the braid, when you cast, it goes in a huge, big, balloony type yeah, loop. it does. So you hit the surface and it's just, like, you're still ballooning out. You can't... And then the problem was with that was the tide was ripping. Yes. With sea fishing. And the tide just ends up bellying your line even big more. Belly, yeah. yeah. So if you've got a bait out, you're ending up just dragging your bait through all the weed. It just, it, it catches weed easier. The weed doesn't slide yeah. off braid like it and does the, And the, the wind, I know it catches the wind. The lighter the braid you go, people think it's really light when it's quite thin yeah. stuff anyway. Yeah. So almost you can afford to use... I don't know, for sea fishing, 15 pound braid or something Easy. like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's still fine. Yeah. You still get a lot, and you'll cast a long way with that. I've got tiny baby perch on 15 pound braid. Really? With, with, but with a fluorocarbon leader of about eight pounds. You eight pound leader, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then rod wise, they brought out specific drop shot rods now. When I was doing it, whenever it was, six, seven years ago, maybe eight years ago now, I can't remember, there was no specific kind of drop yeah. shot rod. Really popular it, it, it was just, it was just, Sea, light tackle sea fishing rods that people were using yeah. and I still use them so this one again is a rock it's called rockfish HTO rockfish and I'll tell you the length six foot eleven and it's cast a lure weight of 0 0.5 to 7 grams so that would be, be the maximum of what it casts now it is a little bit tippy yeah so, see how it's a bit whippy on the tip I don't really like that for the drop shot fishing yeah because you're trying to jiggle the lure and actually it's kind of not doing oh, too much. Oh, I you're jiggling the tip. Yeah, it's too it's soft. Too soft. So oh, yeah, I, I yeah. kind of like a bit more of a, a, a stiff tip. That is really like a hair when you look at that. But bite detection, you get it really easy. Yeah. And you get a great scrap because it folds over. Yes, it's almost so, like yeah. a match fishing rod, you know, it folds right over. All tip action. Same again, this is, like, oh, this is an updated version. This is one to eight grams, so slightly thicker. Look how much stiffer that tip is. Oh, that's better, yeah. Guys, you see it much, yeah. much. But if I quiver it, yeah. Stiff, it? yeah. See how it, I don't know what it's called. Is it called the return or something when it gets know. back to its shape quickly? I'll call it fast action. Fast action. Boom. That's right. what I, I like. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I like fast action. That's got much softer action on it. I don't like soft action rods. It's like yeah. your match rods. I don't like yeah, yeah, yeah. using I soft action. I like something I'm in connection with as quick as possible. Yeah, it's difficult even float fishing when I have like two different match rods. One's a soft action and one which is very light and thin, more modern, is a fast action. And the difference between striking, I can strike with a soft action and strike with a fast action. One will either bump fish off or just miss completely. It's two different actions totally. I'll just grab one more thing, my lens. Oh, the weights, weight. the weights, the dreaded drop shot weight. Oh my god. Yeah. There's got to be a different way of doing this somehow. If I've still got the drop shot version, this is just my general, this is just my jig box, jig, leg jig heads. So these are all small sea fishing jig heads. You can see they're tiny, they're great for wrasse. Yeah. Um, if you want bigger fish, you can just use bigger jig heads, bigger lures. To get down with the current. Yeah, because they get washed like around. That. You want to use these on a real low, small tide. Yeah. Um, and then I've got bigger ones this side, which are my kind of perch, big perch lures. If I'm hopping on the bottom of a perch, I'd use a big jig head. Yeah, yeah. Um, or, we, we, or I would probably weedless rig it. Uh, if I'm doing perch yes. on the bottom, I would rig it. With a rubber Texas, worm or something. Yeah, like Texas style with the, with the crayfish. But that's more of a sea fish, wrass and pollock. So you can Texas rig crayfish then? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see it. I yeah, you can Texas I thought it was only the rubber worms. No, you can worms. Texas rig them. In fact, you need to because you're dragging them through the bottom. And I don't know if I've got my other legs actually. I thought I had the drop shot legs, but they're obviously not in my drop shot bag. Yeah. I don't have the drop shot weight on me, but it just essentially you can slide it through the line and yeah. snap it on anywhere up the line. You it can pinches, just it, doesn't it? Pinches tight. Yeah. I've lost yeah. loads though. I know, I've seen them lose them. I yeah. think it's got to be a really bad design. You can lose yeah. them. It's a clever design because you can adjust the depth quickly, but at the same time you can lose them. Yeah. But yeah. I use anything from 7 grams, mostly, mostly 7 to 10 grams, if it's a fast flowing river, like I'd use anything up to 20 grams. Yeah. But that's really sort of heavy. Most of the time it's seven to 12. Could people use a swan shot or something like that? 
behind his stead. Uh, uh, split shot. Yeah, you, just pinching on. You can get a double SSG, is it? A double yeah. weight SSG was quite heavy. It's not far away from the weight. So if you're a beginner, yeah. you don't have to get those drop shot weights. I think you just try with just, a, you know regular yeah. weights. And actually, yeah, you can still quickly adjust that by pinching it open and adjusting the height and the depth doing that. So there That's, you go, guys. Yeah. Some tips, Mike. Appreciate that. That's all right. Where's this beer then? There's a beer, the beer inside the house. When, do you know what we've been doing today? It's an evening. We've been fishing all day. We've been working all day finishing the Saxon House build, which we finally, I finally know. finished. We got there, Doug. It's we an there. epic. So if you go on Mike's, that's our sister channel, TA Outdoors, you're going to see loads of work on there. But he's finally finished. We had a little cook up, then we had bacon we did. and stuff there. And yeah. we had a nice fire. We got the. Uh, uh, Petra Max cradle out which I really like really yeah. like that for cooking and there'll be a lot more going on so I know a lot of you guys switch over from both channels you know the TA Outdoors Army we know they help support Mike's channel the, the awesome army the yeah. awesome army I've been bad going. for not coming on TA fishing as much it's been terrible fishing. I have been really bad poor and dad's I've, been working his I've, butt off <laughs> I've acknowledged that so I think it's yeah. high time I kind of did a bit more fishing as well with you maybe I'll do maybe I'll do I'm in Somerset now, so maybe I'll do a bit more drop shot fishing and things well, right there. Well, in case guys on the TA uh, fishing don't know, the last one we did together was a few, only a few weeks ago. We went out in a 50-year-old boat, didn't oh, we? Oh, boat. boat, yeah. Two of us did go out fishing, the father and son duo, and we had a really good time with mixed fish. That's already up on Mike's channel. So don't think there's not fishing, you know, on his channel. There is fishing on yeah. there, old ones, very old ones. But of course, because you guys don't support me very well, I don't get the views Mike gets. <laughs> He gets views up to nearly nine, ten million. It'd be actually really cool to get maybe some ideas from your subscribers about other things to put up in here, or maybe some tips on uh, audio or lighting or something like that. Yeah. Um, I think you definitely need a bit more of a lighting on that side. This side, you reckon? Yeah. And if you're going to be filming with the, the wide-angle GoPro all the time, it might be worth seeing. Corner mounts up there? Yeah, just maybe a, a secondary camera or something up there, yeah. just so you can cut in at each time. But this is all... I think it'd be good to see what the guys think of things to, to put in here well, and what you think of the series because yeah. you can update the quality of picture and stuff later down the line but I personally think it's really really good and when that stove's going oh, here oh comes there's another Jack Russell outside here goes trouble so you got all your lures there Mike? yeah oh that's oh, good that's okay the boss in. you don't want to lose the best one do you? oh he's pinched that <laughs> here he comes come on you don't like getting on the push here he comes. Oh, he's scared. He thinks he's going on the vet table. He thinks he's going on the vet table. That's the vet table. This oh, is, I think it's dinner time. This is our second guest coming. <laughs> Here's our second guest, the dog. Yeah. Good well, it's boy. been a good one. Yeah, appreciate your support, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to both channels, TA Fishing and Mike's One, TA Outdoors. We'll see you again on here. And doubtless, there's going to be some more guests showing up. And they won't all be four-legged. <laughs> he's quivering wreck, isn't he? He thinks he's in the vets. Right. <laughs>